Mark Williams is renowned for finding unusual and creative ways to play snooker, but you don't get to become one of the best players in the world for the last 25 years and a three-time world champion without having a fantastic cue action. And there's a lot more to Mark's cue action than it first appears. It's not exactly the same as other top players. But Mark clearly pushes his cue through incredibly straight. So how does this cue action work? Well, modern technology allows us to see exactly what he's doing and why he's been able to become one of the best single ball potters to have ever played the game. The key to understanding how Mark's technique works seems to be how he holds and grips the cue. Because the important bit isn't holding the cue in the right place, it's the way in which it affects the rest of your cue action. Ideally, you need to get in a position where everything is perfectly balanced. If this represents the cue arm, then it only takes a small adjustment of the grip end to make quite a big difference. If I'm gripping the cue in exactly the right place, then when I go to play the shot, my entire arm and the cue are just gonna move through in a straight line. But if I was to get my grip wrong and rotate my wrist around just by a fraction, when I go to push the cue through, my whole arm is gonna come out of line, causing me to miss the pot by quite a long way. So there are many different ways to grip the cue and they all require your arm to be in a very specific position. Mark's technique works so well because he appears to be very good at getting this right and keeping his cue action consistent. From the front, Mark's grip on the cue is very similar to the majority of professional players where they wrap their thumb and forefinger around tightly. This allows him to keep the cue parallel to the table without the risk of it wobbling around in his hand. But looking down the line of the shot, almost every single player appears to have a different grip. But Mark also creates this cup-like position with his fingers, so when he's holding the cue, the cue is essentially just resting in the palm of his hand. The grip loosens up as he pulls the cue back and then tightens again as he pushes it through. This works really well because at the end of his backswing, if his grip's too loose, or too tight, it doesn't matter. The cut position ensures that his cue is going to be in exactly the same place. Which is an advantage over other players because for them, if the grip's too loose or too tight at times, that can cause them to miss the pot. When we looked at Jack Dazowski's cue action, we discovered he took all of his fingers off the cue at the end of his backswing. Jack has an excellent cue action, but this is something that could potentially go wrong. And I know with my technique, if I grip the cue too tightly, that can cause me to pull the cue around my body on my backswing. And that can cause me to cue across the ball and miss. Mark's grip means he will never have this problem, although his fingers are twisted quite a long way around his cue. And this has an effect on the angle of his cue arm. Because he's holding the cue so far around, his arm's going to automatically stick out to the side that way a little bit. But this really isn't a problem, and in fact it means his cue arm will be in exactly the same place every time, and it'll push his cue through straight. The way Mark pushes the cue through is a little bit unique as well. You could describe this as more of a punchy action than other players. A lot of players will pull the cue all the way back as far as it will go on almost every single shot. So that'll be about there. Whereas Mark, on the other hand, doesn't do this, and he actually stops his cue on the majority of shots somewhere around about halfway. So that would have been roughly about there. You can see that Mark does this on the majority of shots, even if he wants to play one slightly harder. If he does this, he uses slightly more cue action, but never the whole thing. So why exactly is he doing this? To start off with, if you're only pulling the cue back that far before pushing it through, there can be a lot less to go wrong. Let me show you how. Watch the bit between my wrist and my elbow here. If I pull it back about that far, that's the only bit of my arm to really move. But if I get any further than about halfway back, my elbow starts coming downwards. This isn't really a problem, it just means more of my arms moving, and that means more can go wrong. Which means Mark doesn't have a long, flowing, smooth cue action like this. Instead, he has quite a short, sharp, punchy action that just comes straight back and straight forwards again. 
I actually found it difficult to mimic this part of Mark's technique because there's very little pause between pulling the cue back and pushing it through. So if Mark's got a shot like this that doesn't require a lot of power, he's only going to use his forearm to play the shot. And that just makes him a lot more consistent. Because he's more likely to get it right playing a shot like this. This delivery will give him a big advantage when he's in the balls playing simple shots, but it does come with consequences. You can try this for yourself, but if you only pull your cue back a little way, it's surprising because you can still hit the ball quite hard. However, it's very difficult to hit the ball straight like this. So if Mark wants to inject a little more pace into the cue ball, he does actually pull it back a little bit further. But there's other things he does as well. His cue dips down slightly on delivery, and this is also crucial to his technique. His short sharp transition from backswing to follow through simply wouldn't work if he didn't dip the cue away from his chin as he played the shot. Because if your cue's still going back when it starts to go through, this can cause it to wobble and end up with you missing the shot. Mark counters this by transitioning downwards slightly as he pushes the cue through. And although this isn't a perfect solution, it prevents him from jabbing at the ball and missing because of it. When you put it all together, unsurprisingly, it works quite well. And it actually explains one of the unusual characteristics of Mark's game. Mark will often prefer to roll the cue ball down the table to play a long shot, rather than playing it with a little bit more power as a stun shot. To do this, Mark must be able to play a slow shot at this speed without putting any side spin on it whatsoever. Because any side spin you put on the cue ball makes it veer off course, and this makes it difficult to be accurate from distance. Mark must be really good at finding the centre of the cue ball, and this is really difficult to do, so I'll leave a video at the end that explains how you can do it better. So I think his cue delivery explains a lot about why he's such a good single ball potter. And while he may not be as accurate as some other players on the more powerful shots, and the punchiness of his cue action may make touch control shots slightly harder, his consistent delivery allows him to recover when he runs out of position. But what about the rest of his technique? Well, we're going to look at that after we find Yuri from Haribgra, Morocco, which is there. Well, his stance is pretty standard. One foot on the line of the shot and the other slightly in front. What you see for the majority of players. And his bridge arm and bridge hand, again, are pretty standard. What you see from most professional players. However, there are other techniques that Mark does that aren't that usual. He was probably the first player I've ever seen to use the rest like this to bridge over balls. If you're interested in how you do this, you don't have to be really strong to be able to hold the rest up. You place your hand underneath it and push the rest into the table with your elbow like this. And he's definitely the first player I ever saw play an underarm shot to reach things further down the table. Where a lot of players learn to play with their opposite hand, Mark instead did this, and he seems to be really proficient at it. And of course, the one-handed snooker escapes, which he claims helps him see the angle a little bit better. And then of course there's the break-offs. I'm not sure you'd describe this as a technique, but it's something he started doing for a time that other players went on to copy. But what can we learn from this? We're going to find out after we find RJ from Kandy, Sri Lanka. There we go. But I think the two things you can learn most from Mark's technique is firstly the way he grips the cue, because this is really the simplest way to make sure your hand's in exactly the right place. Because the great thing about this is if I loosen my fingers or tighten my fingers, the cue doesn't move. And that's just going to be incredibly helpful. Although this won't work for everybody, because the way I hold the cue is so different that I don't think I could do anything like that. And secondly, although I wouldn't recommend pushing the cue through so quickly after you've pulled it back, I think the slightly shorter pullback is definitely a benefit. And obviously, if you need more power, there's nothing to stop you pulling the cue back all the way. I always enjoy looking at professional players' techniques in this much detail because I always end up learning something I didn't know at the start. So if you want to know about Jack Glazowski's technique, have a look at this video, or have a look at the video that explains how to strike the cue ball in the centre. And remember, don't just watch play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.